Grand rising. Grand rising. Peace and blessings, Satipu. So glad that you're here today with me. Hopefully all are able to find their access to the room in an easy fashion. I'm grateful to be present. Hey, 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 Hatapu, peace and blessings. Trust that everyone is well and that you are well, that Hatapu, peace and blessings, everyone. Peace and blessings. I trust that all are well. They're in a very peaceful, healthy place. They're having an opportunity to reap the benefits of the practice. Folks have been practicing daily. What we want to be able to do is to continue that practice, to utilize our time together to enhance and expand your ability your ability to practice, your ability to make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. How about that? And so with that, we're going to get started today. And what I'd like to do is just kind of give a brief layout of where we are, what's happening, what's going on, how it's going to flow out for us today. So what it's going to look like is this. We're going to get our SAR stance in, roughly 16 breaths or so, which, you know, using our bellows breathing in that gets to about three, four minutes. So it should be something simple and easy for us to do because all of us are at 10 minutes of horse dance. And so with that, we want to be able to expand so that you get this little three minutes, four minutes in your day, and then we're going to get that full 10 to 20 minutes every day in addition to what we're doing here in the class together. We're going to get into some Qigong. We're going to get into our series, our next series. We're going to finalize Grass the Bird's Tail. And then we're going to start into the next movement, which is called Roll the Ball. And we'll basically be working on the feet for that. We'll see how folks are going. We may want to spend another month on grass and bird's tail just so that everybody feels confident in their movement and their ability because now we're going to be taking another step we want to make sure we'll check in and see how folks are doing with that okay and then what we want to do is because we're right at the full moon we're going to get into our lunar cycle series of movement once we get into our lunar cycle series of movements what we'll do then is keep it in such a way that we're gonna do that. And then we go ahead and jump right on in and get our exercises into the right and left, ward off, we get our form done. And then once the form is done, we'll get into the wisdom from the sages of the ages. Once the wisdom from the sages of the ages is met, we'll then do exactly what we need to do to keep moving forward. So one of the ways that we begin these sessions is that we want to get ourselves in Wu Chi position. And for those that we might actually have a couple of first timers here, Wu Chi position means your heels are together forming a 90 degree angle. 
Your knees are slightly bent. Waist is tucked. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that right now. Then we're gonna place the hands in pyramid hands here. And we're gonna say we bow into each other to all the African, Indian, Asian, Chinese, Native American, and Pacific Islander masters that have gone before us, we bow. And then shasha to each other, teacher to student, student to teacher. All right, now that we got that going, what we're gonna do, as usual, is get into our SAR stance. But in order to do that, I wanna set up a little differently that you wanna be in your Wuchi position with your feet. Okay, knees are unlocked, bottom is tucked, shoulders are relaxed, hands are in pyramid hands. Head is level, jaws are lightly clenched. Tongue is at the roof of the mouth and the soft palate. You're gonna shift your weight to the right leg and come up on the left toes. You're gonna step, heel first, balance the weight. Heels are a little wider than the shoulders width. Sit down, tuck that bottom, relax. Two breaths right here using the bellows breathing. Extend the hands, we're doing a SAR stance. You wanna see your legs as the roots of a tree extending down into the earth. You wanna see your torso as the tree trunk. You wanna see your arms as the branches, your hands are the leaves. As part of the conversation the last two Sundays with Sabah, we had a bit of topic of conversation directly related to this. So this is where you wanna be. You wanna see your head balanced on top of the spine, the golden thread extending into the heavens. Keep the position. Now you wanna close your eyes. And you wanna see Good, get in it, tuck your bottom. And we're gonna go for 16 breaths in the Asara stance position. All right, here we go, 16 breaths.
Get a little deeper, four breaths. Pyramid hands. Shift the weight to the right, slide the left foot in. The Wu Chi position, two breaths. Let the hands come down, shake it out. Uchi, pyramid hands, shift the weight to the right up on the left toes, stepping a little wide in shoulders width, heel first, balancing the weight, two breaths. Toes, knees, and hands all point the same direction, elbows hiding the wrists, Holding the golden balls in the palm of the hands. Rotating the palms into oneness. Two breaths. Into the turtle. Out to the drawbridge. Two breaths. Point the hand between the legs, two breaths. Into oneness. Two breaths. Grab it through the shoot. Pick up the speed. Ha sign out. Ah. 
I'll sign out. Into oneness, two rests. Into elbows. Into oneness, two breaths. Right hand on top of left hand, palms up, thumbs touching. Take the left hand on top so the palms are facing one another. Four breaths, see a ball of gold and white light in between the palms. Into oneness, two breaths. Pyramid hands, two breaths. Shift the weight to the right, slide the left hand. Two breaths and we'll cheat. The hands come down, shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, feet parallel, shoulders width. Again, not the inside. The shoulders, the outside, all right. The feet together, sinking down as we begin to gather and breathing in.
Interlace the fingers. Turn the palms outward. Straight out from the heart. This is called pressing or raising the hands to the heavens. We do this eight times. Inhale on the way up onto the balls of the feet and you exhale on the way down. So here we go, breathing in. Out. And you got your count for the rest. Okay, hands come down and we go into swinging arms. Let them swing. Let them stop on their own. As you slow it down, the friction and movement through the air. Feet are parallel, shoulders width. Remember the goal is to do your age at first and build up to doing it for 90 seconds. You don't want to be out of breath as you do it. Sinking down. So come into opening the chest. Let me do this five times. Keeping the shoulders relaxed. Shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. Feet parallel, shoulders width. Arms at 90-90. Two breaths. Palms are facing the head. Palms facing forward, two breaths. Into pyramid hands. Let the hands come down. Right hand on top of left hand. Shift the weight to the right, turn. And we're gonna just wave hands like clouds, keeping the butt tucked, weight shifted, and turn the waist.
back to front and center. Sun rises over the mountain and sun sets. All right, here we go. We're going to begin ward off to the right and left, four breaths. Pivot to the front, sun rises. Other side. Sun rises two times. Shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right. Feet parallel, shoulders width. We're going to go to the right, four breaths. 
to grasp the bird's tail. Sinking down, sun rises. Stepping back, shake it out. All right, feet parallel, shoulders wet. I'm gonna go flow right all the way through to grass the bird's tail. Sink down and begin. Back. Again, sinking down. All the way to grass the bird's tail. Again. going to go through the lunar cycle. So basically this movement with a few more movements. Sinking down. And here, shift away to the left, step with the right, heel toe it. Bring the right hand up, shift the weight on the left heel as we roll the ball, bring it back, you roll back, you press forward, shift the weight back, push, come back, pivot on the heel, step back, sun rises. Shake it out. All right, here we go to grass the bird's tail. Sinking down, begin. Hold it here, check in with your body. Check your breathing, check your weight distribution, check your feet. Stepping back, shake it out. Opposite hand, opposite leg. And grab a seat. There we 
go. Get that right. Sit tall. All right, everybody's in a good spot. Good, okay. So now, from here, what you wanna do, you're gonna be head level. I'm gonna take your right thumb and index finger, place them palm up on top of the lap, top of the right leg. You're gonna take your left thumb, block off the left nostril, middle and index finger at the center of the forehead, sitting tall. Shoulders relaxed, breathing in, out, in, out, in, out, fire breath. Deep breath in. Release. Exchange hands, no breath. Breathing in. Out. In. Out. In, out, in, out, fire breath, deep breath in, release. Both hands on the lap, palms up, thumb and index finger touching, hands relaxed, breathing in. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Fire breath. Deep breath in. Chin down. Release. Breathing in and out. Again. Notice the nostrils push and pull with the belly. I'm gonna clear the nasal passages, breathing all the way in and out. Breathing the full content of the lungs. Today, as we start our September session, we're gonna begin with the teachings of Ptah Hatep, the oldest complete textbook on wisdom in the world as we begin our wisdom from the sages of the ages. Okay, and <laughs> let's see, am I going to do that one? I'm going to do two because one is very short, okay? And it's very important for the times that we are in at the moment and the times going forward. I love how when you pick up your wisdom text and you clear your mind, it gives you exactly what you need. So we're going to read two. This one says, be circumspect in matters of sexual relations. Be circumspect in matters of sexual relations. And now the next one, which is, if you examine the character of a friend, don't ask other people. Approach your friend. Deal with them alone so as not to suffer from their anger. You may argue with them after a little while. 
you may test their heart in conversation. If what they have seen escapes them, if they do something that annoys you, stay friendly with them and do not attack. Be restrained and don't answer them with hostility. Do not leave them and do not attack them. Their time will not fail to come. They cannot escape their fate. And as we go into and as we're managing these challenging times, it's important for us to know that you may see that that really is talking a bit about friendship and what some folks would call karma and what it's speaking about many folks, even vengeance. Many folks want to be the instrument of vengeance or they want to be present when that karma returns on folks. And that's the ego talking. If you really practice these concepts and you know rare is the opportunity where you are the act of vengeance, where you are the bringer of karma. And in those situations where it does manifest that way, one should be humble and one should really approach it with an air of gratitude for you have been blessed to be the instrument of the creator and you should acknowledge it and see it as such and so that is why i appreciate the crocodile and the reptiles they don't have any emotion around fulfillment of the law because the laws of our people are just and if the laws are just then justice will prevail and so today I greet you with a hetapu, a peace unto you. And I say, as we bow out, our short bow, which is to all the masters that have gone before us, we bow and I say to each other, teacher to student, student to teacher, bearing witness to the ancestors and the eternal witnesses of the earth and the sky. And we say, Ashe, Amen Re Sutin Echeret and Re Nabdank. What is hidden rules what is revealed. What is revealed rules life. Hatep, peace and blessings to you. Thank you so much for joining us. 10 minutes of Asar stance. That's where we're at, y'all. So if you're not there, we need to get up to that place because it's going to inhibit your ability to move effectively through the next section. That's why today we spend most of the time in review. And then we hit the lunar cycle. If it wasn't easy for you to move on into the lunar cycle, the main reason is it's not that the movements are unfamiliar to you. We've been doing them for the last six months together, every new and full moon. If it is feeling difficult to move your feet, it's because your Asar stance is not at 10 minutes. So get your Asar stance where it needs to be. And I'm accessible on all of our social media. So if you need some assistance in moving your SR stance past what we do here in class or what you're doing on video or however you're getting this to you, please reach out. That's a poo.